Traders, let me ask you this. If you hear stochastic or the RSI, which one is better for you to build your own strategy? Most traders will pick one indicator and they'll stick to it. But as algo traders, we need to test and verify which indicators works best for our strategy. And in today's video, I'm putting stochastic and RSI head to head to find out which one will perform better for a mere reversion strategy. These kind of statistical tests are very important because they show you the strength and weaknesses of every indicator. Now, at the end of the day, I'm not looking for the best indicator. For that, go watch my Algo vs. Crab series. I do actually find out which indicator is the best and rank them accordingly. But for this test, I'm using the S&P 500 futures which we know that it's good for long mere reversion strategies. So since both oscillators behave the same, we should come up with the result that both of them are the same, but the results will surprise you. So first of all, what is the RSI and the stochastic? The RSI is the relative strength index. It's calculated as follows. We calculate the average gain divided by the average loss. And then we have this formula, 100 minus 100 over 1 plus the RS. This will give us the RSI. The stochastic, on the other hand, it's a totally different equation. It's the close minus the lowest low divided by the highest high minus the lowest low times 100. Once we get percent K, we get the three bar moving average, which calls percent D. Now, even though they have totally different equation, they look very close. So here I have the S&P 500 index and the orange line is the stochastic 14 bars and the yellow line is the RSI 14 bars. And we see they make the same peaks and valleys. Now on this chart, I have both of them smoothed out so you can see the minimal difference between them. So you can see this one, I have another smoothing, so we can make it like this. And for the RSI, I also have smoothing, we can make it like this. These what they look originally, but as you can see when you smooth them, you can easily see the peaks and valleys. And we can tell that they are basically the same. But the question is, are they the same in performance on the S&P 500 index? And to answer that question, we need to make a level battleground. So I will be using the S&P 500 index, E-mini futures, daily bars. So both of them will use the same data. I will also use the same strategy. I will go long when the oscillator is in oversold area and exit the trade when the oscillator is in overbought area. And then I will optimize over all available values and I will use strategy quant X to do that test. So here we are in strategy quant X in Algo Wizard. So here I have the RSI strategy. It's the RSI below level, we go long, and the exit when the RSI is above a level. Now you can see here the RSI have a look back period of nine and the level is 25 and 75. There are no other conditions in this strategy. And like I mentioned, we are using the S&P 500 E-mini futures, the daily time frame. I have here data from TradeStation imported in from January 1st, 2006, all the way to end of August, 2025. And we are using a fixed size of one contract. Now, same thing for the stochastic. We are using same data, same everything. Except now the rules is the stochastic below level, we go long, stochastic above a level, we exit. Now I'm using the same levels, 25, 20, and 75. Also I'm using the same look back period, which is nine. Except here I have the smoothing factor set at three. The smoothing factor will not make a big impact, negative or positive. So it doesn't matter if you have it or not. If you are new to Strategy Quant X, it's an excellent software to do test build strategies with no code. 
and they have a fully functional trial that you can download and use and follow along with me. Also, if you decide to purchase that software, I have a great offer for you. Look in the description below. Now, to find out which oscillator is best, we cannot just test a single strategy. We need to optimize many, many strategies. Basically, we need thousands of data points. And to do this, we can optimize the RSI look back, which is nine. Uh, we can go from two to 15. I stick two to 11 because after 11, we don't have a lot of trades. And as you can see now, I have the period nine and already the number of trades is 21. Now in strategy quant X, we can do this in two ways. So we can go to the optimizer and load our strategy. In this case, I have the stochastic. But then there is this part where you have to figure out which is which. <laughs> so basically, you can see here it says long stochastic, slow D, high K, period one. And it is nine. This is referring to these guys. We have slow D and we have the period and we have the level. And in the optimizer, you need to find that out. So for example, here nine is the period. So I optimize between two and 11, step one. This is not picked, so I'm not optimizing the uh, moving average. And again, we have the other period, and then we have these constants, which is the long stochastic, slow D, high level, and low level. So again, the low level is this is below and the high level is, is above. Now, if you go to full settings, you can actually say the recommended parameters. And most of the time it will find the correct one, but like you see here, in this case, it didn't. So if you go to your own settings and then you click on period and constants, then you can pick and choose which one to do. The advantage of doing the optimizer is you get a different view of the optimization. So let me run the optimization. So once the test is done, we can look at this important view. And this is what I'm talking about. We can view a surface of the results. Now, if you click on this one, it will maximize it and you can see exactly what's happening. So right now we're looking at the high stochastic, we can put versus the low and net profit. We can have a different variable here. So this usually is good when you have three or two variables. More than two variables, it will be hard because as you can see, we have to pick and choose to see our surface. And there are different ways to see it. So top view, 3D surface, 3D bar, and 3D points. Like I mentioned, when you have more than two variables, you cannot view now the surface anymore and you need to stick to statistical data to find out the metrics. So the other way to do this is to turn this into a template. And you do this by going to settings, advanced, turn it into a template. And now I can decide what I will optimize. So. And now we can optimize the variable we want. So for the period, we click generate randomly, and we will go from two to 11 in step of one. And for the levels, again, generate randomly, we will go from five to 45 in a step of five. So this will be our entry. And our exit, again, from so this will be 55 to 95 step five. Now remember, there are no extra conditions or optimization in this template. So we are not optimizing anything in the exits or adding another condition. It's just this template. So this template will be fixed. And when we take it to the builder, it will only optimize these variables. So save this file as a template. Basically, you just save as. And there is a bug in SQX, depending on when you see this video. I'm using version 141. You need to save it and load it again and save it. Otherwise, it will not save the template. So now we have the template. We can go to Builder. 
and go to strategy from template, pick your strategy. And once you pick it, again, nothing will affect the strategy. All the options, there is no option that will affect it. So building blocks, as you can see, I have nothing picked. And in all these things, doesn't matter. Like you see here, I have long and short uh, conditions. It doesn't matter because our template will only optimize the look back and the levels, and that's it. So now we have the template picked. Of course, I pick the same data. And in my ranking, I'm asking for an average trade of 100 and a number of trades of 100. I'm not interested in the lower variations of the strategy. Now, theoretically, this should give us about 8,000 variations, but because we have the ranking filter, we will get probably around 3,000 or 2,000 strategies. So let's run the strategy. And now this will start building. So I stopped it here at 2,000, and now we can pick all these strategies and we can rename them. So just add a prefix, this will be the RSI, and click rename. Now all these will be renamed to the RSI prefix, and then pick them again, right click, copy, and we go to Portfolio Master, and I pasted the strategies here. So this is the RSI strategies, and I did the same thing for the stochastic, which is here. And that is how easy it is to do an optimization in Strategy Quantex. Basically, you can do all the optimizations you want without any line of code, and you get all the results populated, and then you can do actually more tests on the results. So in order to compare the results and see which indicator is the best, I sorted the results by return to drawdown. This is my favorite metric because it's a metric that is a risk adjusted. Basically, we are not measuring only the net profit. We're also measuring the maximum drawdown. And so this is the ratio. So then I added the top 100 strategies and the top 700 strategies. Now I did that to get an average of most good strategies because I don't want to compare a single strategy to a single strategy from both indicators. This will be meaningless because basically we are comparing noise. So when I average the top 100 strategies, that should give us a really good idea of which indicator is best. And then the top 700 strategies, that's almost a third of the um, total strategy because I did 2000. And that statistically should give us a better indication of which indicator is the best. And here are the results. So the stochastic portfolio of the top 100 strategies of the stochastic sorted by return to drawdown is this one. And then the top 100 strategies sorted by return to drawdown from the RSI is this line. So here we can easily compare the top 100. So first of all, in terms of trades, they are very close, about 20,000 trades. Winning percent, again, very close with the RSI slightly ahead. Average trade, very close. Again, the RSI slightly ahead. Same goes for profit factor. And these are some uh, risk adjusted metrics, the average trade by the standard deviation, return to drawdown, also performance index, and recovery factor. And all of them, the RSI is doing better. Also very important here, if I go to the right, we have here the stagnation. Stagnation here is 1297 and here is 1757. So here is the top, stochastic portfolio, and we can switch the stagnation to full. And we can see here we have 1757 days. And if we switch to the RSI portfolio, we can see we are less, which is 1297 days. And of course, this is really good because we want to spend less time not making a new high. And now we will go to the 700. So this should give us much better statistical point to compare. 
And now we see here that we have a lot more trades in the RSI portfolio than in the stochastic portfolio. So this is 106,000. This is 161,000. And now we see a bigger gap in the winning percent, bigger gap in the average trade, again, profit factor, again, average trade. These are risk metrics. And again, the gap now is much bigger. And also, again, probably you saw this already, the stagnation here is also lower than the other portfolio. Although the gap is lower than the 100 strategy portfolio. But overall, definitely the RSI is doing better than the stochastic. And I love these kinds of tests because statistically, you are confident of the results. So these results show that the RSI is definitely better than the stochastic overall. And I can tell you also individually, the RSI strategies are better. So here is the full database of both of them, RSI and the stochastic, sorted by return to drawdown. And we can see the RSI is on the top until here, which is about 25 strategies down, we have a stochastic strategy. Even then, a stochastic here, another one here, and we continue with the RSI. So definitely, even individually, the RSI strategies are doing better. Now that should not deter you from using the stochastic. And for the regular viewers of the channels, they know why. Because ultimately what you want is to construct a portfolio of all these different strategies that is smoother. And this is what I mean. So here I have two strategies from the RSI database and two from the stochastic. And I did a portfolio. So this is strategy one, this is strategy two, and three, and four. But combining them in a portfolio, I get a smoother equity curve with a higher return to drawdown ratio, as you can see here. In fact, I am higher on all risk metrics. Also, what's good here is I have a lower stagnation period than all strategies. So you see, the minimum strategy was 8, 9, 6, these guys 11, 13, and 16. But combining them, I get 8, 8, 5 stagnation period, which is the lowest of the four. And that is the main advantage of building different strategies to get different equity curves, to combine them in a portfolio to get a smoother equity curve overall. And if you like this video, then you will love the next one.